Okay, welcome to the first gas processing tutorial. In this tutorial, what we'll be doing is taking a look at multi-flash. So we'll go through some basic concepts in multi-flash, and then ultimately what we'll do is to use this file uh, to feed into Olga. And Olga is what we'll be looking at in tutorial 2, where we'll build a simple steady state case. So this is what the multi-flash window looks like when you open it up. And the easiest way to get acquainted with multi-flash is to use some existing uh, fluid files within the software. So we can do that by going open and taking a look at the black oil, for example. So this, you can see, opens up uh, an inbuilt file within multi-flash that has a series of components and various different properties. So we can see what those components are by taking a look at select components, and we can see these are largely divided up into two groups. So we have our well-known components, so methane, ethane, protane, and n-butane, and we have what are called pseudo-fractions, or petroleum fractions, down the bottom here. Now, these well-known components can be added to uh, the overall multi-flash simulation by simply typing in a name here, and either pressing enter, pressing add, or pressing insert if you'd like it to appear somewhere within the list here. So we can see we've just added water, and that appears at the bottom of the list. Now these second type of components in here, the pseudo-fractions, they have to be added by clicking on Add Remove Petroleum Fractions here. And what we can see then is it brings up this list of a given component and the various properties that are associated with that component. Now in general, you're going to determine these properties using some sort of experimental method. Uh, when a sample of oil is taken, they will use, for example, uh, boiling point distillation to work out what the boiling point is. And then there are various correlations which will allow you to work out a number of these other different properties in here. <coughs> now in general, what you should do is to enter as many of these different possible or different properties as you have available, as this will give you the best possible result in your predictions. So, with that done, we can see that we have a range of different components here. And what we can move on to is taking a look at the model that we're going to use in order to simulate these. So again, we look at Select, Model Set, and now we have a vast range of different models that are available within MultiFlash. So you can see up the top here we have, for example, Hydrates models. You'll have to use these if you wish to simulate any sort of hydrate formation. Similarly, Waxes, you will require this if you're trying to simulate wax formation within MultiFlash. But the ones that we're interested in for now are these Cubic Equation of State models. And in general, I would recommend using the peng Robinson Advanced Model, because this is going to be uh, good in terms of its density predictions, particularly when we're dealing with water. Finally, then, we have these other properties down here, our transport properties. We can see we have viscosity, thermal conductivity, and surface tension models. Now, the surface tension models, for our purposes, and the thermal conductivity models, to a lesser extent, aren't going to make that much of a difference. Our viscosity model is going to be very important. Now, whenever we've made any sort of changes to our models within MultiFlash, what we have to do is to press Define Model. And as you can see, we've now defined a model set, which is Peng Robinson Advanced, with a range of different uh, models for its transport properties. And now we can press Close. So, if we want to have a general idea of what it is that our fluid looks like, what we can do is to take a look at the phase envelope. So the way that we do that is to press this little phase envelope button up here, and it'll bring up a little window. What we do is press plot, and typically what will happen... So typically what will happen is you'll get this little box here, which asks if you'd like to plot uh, more points on the phase boundary. Now the answer is always yes, because this allows you to view the entire phase envelope, which is what we have here. So for those of you unfamiliar with how these work, uh, basically it's telling you, or it's a map of where different phases exist in the system. So if we have high temperatures and low pressures, we'll have a gas. If we have uh, low temperatures and high pressures, we'll have a liquid. And if we have some intermediate condition, we can have both gas and liquid present. So within this phase envelope boundary, this is the two-phase region. So. What we can do if we want to have a look at how uh, the fluid behaves at a specific set of conditions is to use what are called PT flashes, and that is activated by using this condition set up here. So let's say we want to have a look at 95 degrees C and 100 atmospheres. We press PT, and this conducts a, uh, a PT flash. So you can see at these conditions we have gas and liquid 1, so liquid 1 means hydrocarbon phase or oil, 
these are both present. Uh, this tells us how the different components are distributed between the two phases, how much is actually in each phase, and then a range of different properties associated with each of these different phases. We can see, for example, the density, the enthalpy, entropy, internal energy, and Gibbs energy. Now we can also change some of these units so that they're in more familiar terms. So if we change select units, now our temperature in degrees C, that's fine. Our pressure, let's change that into bar. And our density, we can have this in kilos per meter cubed. So we press OK. And then if we want any of these units to update, we have to perform the flash again. And you can see now we have our density in a much more familiar kilos per meter cubed. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to take a look at how we can create what's called a tab file for Olga. And this is going to allow the predictions of multi-flash to be used by Olga when it's simulating a subsea flow line. So what we want to do first um, is to load up our particular problem set. In this case, for this example, we'll be using a black oil. Now remember earlier what we did was to add some water into the system. But before we can actually do any sort of calculations uh, with water, we have to tell it how much is going to be in the system. So we are going to just add 470 moles of water into this system and see what happens. Okay, so before we do any sort of uh, actual calculations, we have our water in here. What we want to do is to change the model so that it has water present. So these phases here are the ones that are going to be considered when MultiFlash actually does its uh, calculations. So now that we have water in the system, we want it to consider water as well. And again, we can define our model. That's happy. Now what we can do, let's see what this looks like overall by taking a look at our phase envelope. So if we plot this, we can see that this is significantly different uh, from what we had previously. Now, at these relatively low temperatures, you can see that the phase envelope is largely matched, at least along this curve here. But as we go to these very high temperatures, uh, we can see some significant deviation. Now this isn't necessarily going to be a problem, because you have to consider what condition set you're actually going to be using in your calculations. So to be able to tell if this is actually going to be a problem, what we have to do is to introduce uh, an actual system that we can compare it to. And so what this is, is a relatively simple system where we're going to be simulating the wellbore, the flow line, and then the riser up to some top sides. And you can see within that particular uh, setup, we have a maximum temperature of about 200 Fahrenheit. So that's going to lie in here somewhere. So what you can see in that particular system is that it doesn't actually matter that the phase envelope acts strangely in this region up here, because it's not going to affect our system in this region of interest down here. And that brings us then to how we're going to integrate MultiFlash with Olga. So that's done through what are called tab files. So that example that's been given to you actually uses uh, field units. So what we'll do is to change the units to Fahrenheit and to PSI. PSI. Okay, now what we're going to do is to create our table file. So we do that, we press table, Olga, and you can see we have some location to save that. We want to give it some sort of fluid ID. Now a couple of important things here. Uh, do not begin this name with a number, because that will cause problems with Olga. And ideally, don't have any sort of spaces or special characters within the name itself. So what we're doing here is creating a table of pressure and temperature values, where we've calculated all sorts of properties, density, enthalpy, entropy, all of these different sorts of things that we can see that are output by MultiFlash, and that are used by Olga within its calculations. So the range over which we compute these values is seen in this bottom section here. So we have our starting point in pressure and temperature, our finishing point in temperature and pressure, and we want to also input the number of points that we're going to use. So the specific values that you want to use down here are dependent on the given system that you have. Now in that example uh, that we have given you, we can see that the lower pressure that you're going to experience uh, is going to be on the order of 300 psi. But what we want to do is to go a little bit below that in case the Olga simulation dips below that value. So instead of 300 psi, let's start at 100 psi. And our upper pressure, which is our wellhead pressure, 
is 1200 PSI. But again, we want to give ourselves some leeway here. So let's make that 1500 PSI. Now our upper temperature here, this is defined by what occurs at the wellhead. That's 200 degrees Fahrenheit. But we can go a little bit further than that. And let's say choose uh, 400 Fahrenheit, just to give us a lot of safety. Now our lower temperature here, this is an interesting one, because it's not necessarily defined by the lowest temperature that you see at your boundaries. It can also include the interior conditions. So for example, this pipeline is traveling along the sea floor, where the lowest temperature that you'll experience is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's just use a little bit below that. Uh, and that's going to be the four conditions that we want to calculate our table between. Now what we need to do is to tell MultiFlash how many points we'd like to have in this table. Let's say 50 and 50, and then we can tell it to calculate the table. And this can take a little while, but once it's done, we can see that we have uh, our table, which has been successfully written here. So what we can actually do is to browse to this Augur tab file and open it up in something like Notepad, which is what we see here. So as we're deconstructing this, we can see, uh, for example, this is a three-phase system. These are the different components that we have available. This is our composition, our molecular weights. Um, and we can see, ultimately, once we get down to this table section here, that we have a range of temperatures, a range of pressures, and then we have all of these different columns corresponding to various different properties. So for example, our gas density, our hydrocarbon liquid density, and our water density. So these correspond to these three columns here, gas density, oil density, and water density. So what we've done now is to create our tab file, and this is what's going to be fed into Olga, start of our next tutorial.